All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. My name is Patrick France, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Welcome to this week's mobile coaching stream. Once again, uh, my name is Patrick France. I'm a Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. I hope you guys are all having a good day. Waiting for everybody just to uh, get in here. I know we should be live both now on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you for that, Drew. Typing in first for the morning. Uh, BB Nation. Yeah, if you guys can hear me out there, everything's coming through fine. Let me see some BB Nations running through the chat right now. All right. So once again, uh, this is our weekly mobile coaching stream. And what we do is we go over the VectorVest Stock Advisory app. And the VectorVest Stock Advisory app is by far one of the most comprehensive trading apps available to you to help you make faster, better, and smarter investing decisions. So hopefully you guys are all having a good morning so far. Hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying your Thursdays. Uh, good morning, Rodney. Glad to have you here. So it looks like we should be good on YouTube. Let's go ahead and make sure everything's good on Facebook. Facebook looks like everything's running up or uh, properly here. So awesome. Glad to see everything is uh, working for us here today. All right. So as always, what we're going to be doing here today is first taking a look at what's going on in the market. And then we'll dive into our topic of discussion. So we're going to be hunting for some opportunities in the ETFs uh, to help, you know, make some money here in this market, because there seems to be a common theme with what we're seeing here with a lot of these uh, that could really benefit everybody out there and help find some great money making opportunities. And then as always, at the very end, we'll take a look at any stock that you want to take a look at in less than 10 seconds. So if you guys want to see your own stocks analyzed, make sure to stick around towards the very end and we'll analyze those stocks for you right away. So if you guys are just not seeing a lot of people just now coming in, I think the notification just went out. So welcome everybody who's uh, coming in now. Hopefully you guys are having a good Thursday and welcome to this week's coaching stream. Um, once again, my name is Patrick France. I'm a senior instructor here at VectorVest and I will be helping you guys find some great opportunities using some ETFs here this week. All right. Good morning, Mark. Hopefully you're doing well. Good morning, Ray. Glad to have you here. So if you guys are new or if you guys are have been here for a while, as always, if you like these coaching streams and you want to see more of them and you want to see uh, more content from our YouTube channel, make sure as always smash that like button to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you're over on the Facebook page, make sure to hit that thumbs up and share the video out with all your friends and family to help continue to grow this awesome community that we've built here. All right, so with that all uh, said and done, let's go ahead and jump right into it here today. Taking a look right at the very top center, uh, the major indices. And as we can see, the Dow is up about 7 tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq's being one of the biggest leaders right now, up about 1.6%. S&P 500's up about 1%. Overall, the vector best composite up about 1.3% for the session so far. So therefore, the market time engage is one tick into the green. The market is mildly bullish and VectorVest advocates caution still when buying stocks at this time. So even though we do have a green light starting to appear, we still advocate using caution because we don't have enough consistency to really, you know, give the full three green lights here. So as we scroll down, taking a look at the color guard, as always, that's where the market time engage gets its colors from here. Um, and looking at it, we can see that one green light does come from the price column, which tells us the price of the vector risk composite is moving higher day over day and week over week. We look at the RT, we can see we're still moving higher day over day and week over week, but we remain below one. So therefore that tells us that the short term trend in the market is still down here since it is on a scaling of zero to two. So anything below one would indicate that. Um, Looking more and more like a bottom. Well, we'll go ahead and see that here in a little bit there, Alberto. Looking at the buy to sell ratio, the buy to sell ratio is looking at the overall health of the market. It's cast or it's, uh, you know, since it's a ratio, anything above one would indicate that there's more buys than sells. And if it's below one, that would indicate more sells than buys. So right now we do have overall market weakness since we do have more sells out there than buys. But that is slowly improving off of these lows we've had over the last few weeks. Then, as always, these three indicators are comprised to come up with the MTI or the market timing indicator, and it's looking at the underlying trend of the market. Now, this one's going to be on a scaling of zero to two once again, and above one would indicate that the underlying trend is up, and below one would indicate that the underlying trend is down. So, since it's below one, the underlying trend of the market still remains down at this current time. 
After that, we then get the trend column, which shows two parts of trend each and every day. And the first part is referring to what we like to call the primary wave, which is just simply the short term or weekly trend in the market. As we can see, it is up since the price of VectorVest Composite is higher than it was compared to five trading days earlier. The second part is looking at the underlying trend or the MTI. And since the MTI is below one, the underlying trend in the market still remains down. And then last but not least, we then like to take a look at the calls column, which stands for our confirmed calls. And these are our most conservative timing systems here at VectorVest. They're our last signal we're going to get to get into the market and our last signal we're going to get to get out. And as you can see, we still remain in that confirmed down situation as of today. Now, as we talked about at the very beginning, we do only have one green light, therefore we advocate caution. So therefore, we always want to take a look at the advanced and declines here at the very bottom. Now, when looking at the advanced and declines, we're typically favoring at least a two to one bias in a certain direction. So if the market's moving higher, we want to see twice as many stocks advancing and declining. And if the market's moving lower, we want to see twice as many stocks declining and advancing. Well, right now we're sitting at about 73% of stocks moving higher and about 15% of stocks moving lower. So clearly meeting that two to one bias that we like to see. Therefore, if we're gonna be playing the market here today, we could potentially be adding a long position to our portfolio to slowly transition from those bearish positions we've been in, maybe into more bullish positions going forward here. All right, so now we've covered what's going on in the market let's talk about our topic or let's go in and find some great opportunities here. So as we've talked about in the past, there's a great watch list or great uh, search that we've built here together as a community that can help us find ETFs, both for the ups and the downs in the market. So if we go into the uh, stock pick ideas over on the left, at the very bottom, you have premium watch list and then featured screens. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the featured screens. And then right at the top, you have ETF pairs bullish and ETF pairs bearish. So what we're going to do, the market's moving higher here today. So we're going to start off taking a look at the ETF pairs bullish and just talk about this here. So these are going to be lots of different aspects in the market. So different uh, commodities, major indices, single leverage, triple leverage, double leverage, there's a wide variety to help suit any investor's needs and what they're looking for. And a lot of different areas in the market all covered in this one watch list for your benefit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be going through some of these and looking at the charts and seeing what they're telling us because there could be some great opportunities that uh, you need to be aware of. That way you don't miss out on, so, you know, you don't miss out and able to take advantage of them early rather than jumping on the board or bandwagon late and then you know not getting nearly as much of the performance that you wanted to see out of them. Now, one thing we will say, markets have been moving lower. So we take a look at this watch list right now, only one buy rating, a few holds, and then a lot of sells. No surprise, the, these are all based off uh, major indices, uh, commodities, and they've been getting beaten up pretty bad here. So therefore, of course, we're gonna see sell ratings on some of these. Um, but that's why we're going to be looking for those opportunities as of today. So let's go ahead. As always, we take a look at the very first one, yen. So looking at the China bull three times ETF. Now, as always, when you look at the analysis at the bottom, you have the RV, RS, RT, and VST, which are all going to be cast on a scale of zero to two. But since we're dealing with ETFs here today, the only indicator that we really need to be focusing on is the RT or relative timing. This is looking at the short-term price trend, and since it's cast on that scale of zero to two, above one would indicate a short or short-term uptrend, below one would indicate a short-term downtrend. So with yen, as we can see, it is in a really strong short-term uptrend currently. But let's go ahead, take a look at the graph. So we'll tap on the graph at the top. And once we get our graph here, what we wanna do is customize it to really uh, be able to fit what we're looking for. So we're gonna go to the graph settings at the bottom, and the lower graph, the indicator there, we're gonna change that from earnings per share and just simply select MACD. MACD is a great technical indicator that is um, most likely familiar with a lot of people out there. It stands for the moving average convergent divergence and it shows not only short-term trends but also longer-term trends. The short-term trends can be analyzed by looking at the difference between that light blue line and the black line or the MACD line and the signal line and then the longer term trends uh, can be identified by the direction of those indicators and 
that level of zero. So if those uh, those lines are below that level of zero, that indicates a long-term downtrend. And if they're above that level of zero, that would indicate long-term uptrend. So when looking at yen, for example, what we noticed is over the last few months, yen was steadily falling here, as we can all, all agree upon right there. But look at what the MACD was doing over that same time frame. The MACD, you had a nice steady rise during that time frame, indicating that that short-term pressure, that short-term momentum to the downside was dissipating and that you're starting to see a change or a change in that momentum from down to slowing down to potentially reversing and starting to head positive. Well, what happened since that point? You started noticing prices started hitting higher lows and higher highs by basic definition, putting us now in a new uptrend. And then as we continue to progress here coming into today, the MACD line just turned positive or the MACD on a longer term basis just went positive about, you know, less than a month ago, or about a month ago at most. So that's definitely a positive sign. So from this standpoint, not only on a short term basis, did we see that bullish divergence, we then saw that bullish divergence turn to a short term uptrend. And that short term uptrend is now developed enough to turn into a longer term uptrend based on what we're seeing here with the MACD. So if we get out of here, let's go to the next one. UBT. UBT is another interesting one. Been steadily moving lower. We'll go ahead and maximize it here. UBT has been steadily moving lower here, but look at what MACD has been doing. MACD has been slowly starting to trend higher here, indicating that that short-term pressure to the downside is dissipating and that new or new bullish momentum may be starting to pick up to the upside. So at this point, we have the three and the eight exponential moving average, which indicates short-term momentum when looking at uh, the price action here. The three and the eight is currently positive. Yes, it's pulling back a little bit over the last couple of days, but you are starting to see this downtrend dissipating and now seeing a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And once again, by the basic definition, putting us in an uptrend. Um, Carter saying, can you set up a simple moving average nine and 20, please? Sure, yeah. Well, if you ever wanna customize anything in your graphs, just simply go to the tools or the uh, graph settings in the upper left. We'll go to moving averages. We'll change it to simple. Put in a nine and then change the other one. Put in a 20. Got our nine and 20. So there we go. So now we have the nine day simple moving average and a 20 day simple moving average uh, indicated here on the graph rather than that three and the eight. So there you go. Hopefully, hopefully that helps you out in setting up your graphs going forward. Um, and on the shorter term or on the nine and 20, looking at from that standpoint, while you do see a couple of, uh, you know, false flags or a couple of, of reversals here, you need to be careful on that point. You are positive on a short term basis, meaning that the short term moving average of that nine move or nine day moving average is greater than that 20 day moving average, which is definitely a positive sign. But, you know, to make sure that you don't have any uh, any of these whipsaws, just want to make sure that you get confirmation of that. Or if you do get in, use tight stops on something like this as well. Uh, but right now, you know, on a shorter term or on a longer term basis, the longer term momentum is still favoring the downside, but based off of the MACD here at the bottom, you are seeing that longer term momentum reversing and we're pretty close to that level of zero. So if we can break above that level of zero, that would indicate that nice upward longer term trend on UBT or giving you a good buying opportunity here with this one as well. So if we go to the next LABU, this is one we've been, we talked about yesterday during our AMA that we had with uh, Glenn Tompkins and myself. Um, but this has been an interesting one here. You've been steadily moving lower and then all of a sudden consolidating over the last few months. And then MACD during that same time frame has started been picking up. And then just recently you saw the MACD line and the signal line cross above that level of zero, giving you now a long-term uptrend starting to form. Uh, you know, if you look at the volume, which we can go ahead, change that real fast, uh, go to our lower graph, add or change it to volume instead of the MACD. 
you can see a huge increase in volume ever since about the beginning of May when LABU has been moving sideways. Let's just go ahead and maximize it. When LABU started moving sideways, look at the increase in volume from that time frame. That is usually a sign of accumulation going on or big money buying in because they feel that this is a cheap enough pli or cheap enough price to get in at or it's a bargain right now at these prices. So that's a lot of buying activity going on, seeing a lot of accumulation going on. And therefore, now you're starting to see the uh, MACD line or the MACD going positive on a longer term basis and using the nine and 20 short term or simple moving averages. You do have a new uptrend forming as well on there. Um, not understanding everything you're discussing, but I'm here to learn. Well, Calvin, uh, welcome first and foremost. And if you have questions, don't feel or don't hesitate to ask. You know, if you have a question, most likely somebody else does as well. Uh, but this is stuff that we cover on a weekly basis, you know, talking about the MACD. So if it feels kind of foreign to you right now, that's okay. Don't worry. Um, you know, coming in weekly, hanging out with us on a weekly basis, I'm sure it'll help, uh, you know, get familiar with this a little bit more. Also take advantage of our support team. Our support staff is here to help you out. Uh, not only with navigation of the program, but making sure you're understanding the tools that you're, you have available to you. So if you have questions about, you know, the technical indicators like MACD and want to get questions, you know, make sure, um, or have questions about that and want to get answers, make sure to give our support a call and they can help you out as well. All right. So going back out of here, going into the graph settings one more time, putting back MACD. There we go. Moving on to the next one. DDM. So looking at uh, the Russ or excuse me, the Dow here. Uh, DDM is a little bit different. DDM really hasn't shown any new trends starting to form or bullish divergence starting to form with the price action and the MACD. MACD has really been moving just sideways and even confirmed that lower low compared to these two points here, rather than uh, you know seeing a higher low being formed with the MACD. Um, do you have a site or a link? Uh, so. Our support team should be able to help you find some some of the uh, some of the content we have to help you out with some of the basics there. Uh, we also have a basic course inside the app that you can definitely start off with there. Um, other free resources that are great to use investing or investopedia.com. Um, but you know if there's if there's something that I say that you know you're not familiar with the language, just don't hesitate to ask. Let me know. I'd be glad to answer it for you. All right, so DDM not really getting that uh, that look that we've seen so far with other opportunities here. Going to the next one, SSO. So the S and P five hundred. Now this one, you do see higher lows being formed from here to here. MACD is moving higher, price is moving lower, which indicates um, that's what we're looking for for that bullish divergence. That's what indicates that bullish divergence is when. You have price action still moving lower, but you have uh, the MACD here at the bottom moving higher. You know, so therefore, one diverging together, and that usually indicates that that downward pressure is dissipating, and therefore tells you you should add it to your list, add it to your watch list, keep an eye on it, and wait for whatever you're using as a sign to jump on board. Uh, wait for that confirmation, and then take advantage of it because. When you have these divergences, they can lead to some great moves or great runners in your portfolio and you know help add that green to your portfolio that everybody wants to see there. Uh, so that's what we're looking for when, and that's why we're looking at these divergences here. All right, so SSO, so S&P 500, looking pretty good right now. Now, you're starting to also see that MACD line and the signal line starting to pick back up, heading towards that neutral territory of zero, so if we cross above that level of zero, that would indicate a new longer term uptrend starting to form. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, QQQ. So looking at the NASDAQ here, um, you can see price has been steadily moving lower. I think we could all agree upon that, but look at what MACD is doing. MACD is starting to steadily pick up and now right below that level of zero. So from a short term standpoint, because that blue line is greater than the black line, that tells us we have short-term momentum to the upside. 
And now if we break above that neutral territory of zero, that would indicate a long-term uptrend starting to form. And based off the nine and 20, you have a nine and 20 SMA crossover as of today on QLD. So as we know, NASDAQ has been one of the most beaten down indexes out there this year. So we're seeing signs that, you know, the second half of 2022 could possibly be promising for, for the tech stocks that have been beaten up so badly. So uh, interesting to point out, you know, interesting to keep on a radar, especially, you know, by the time most people realize that, hey, NASDAQ looks like, or the NASDAQ or even S&P look like good opportunities, you're going to already miss out on a lot of that run or miss out on some great profits there. And so that's why, you know, we want to work with you guys. We want to talk about these things, bring them to your attention. So that way uh, you can get more familiar with these types of patterns, but also, um, you know, make sure you're able to catch these types of, uh, these types of looks early so you can make even greater profits. You know, the smarter investor makes, or the, the more you know, the better you can uh, improve on your investing there. All right. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next. EET, emerging markets. So interesting, you know, to see emerging markets coming in here. Um, emerging markets, though, still showing that same situation. Emerging markets, been steadily moving lower. MACD steadily picking up over that same time frame. Now, MACD may be starting to roll over right now, so this is why you always wait for confirmation. Whether it be you know using a trend line on your broker account, connecting these highs here, and waiting for a breakout from that uh, trend line, or whatever it may be that you use on your own to uh, signal you know a reversal or signal uh, a breakout occurring, you know that's what you're waiting for. So. Make sure, you know, trend lines are great. Everybody can use them. Uh, use your trend line, wait for those uh, lower high patterns to be broken, and that would give you confirmation of time to jump on board and start getting into it. Uh, Victor, as always, if you want to see your stocks analyzed, make sure just to stick around towards the end and I'll analyze any stock that you want to take a look at there. All right, UDAO. So we already looked at the Dow ETF. UDAO also not confirming that bullish divergence we've been seeing with, uh, you know, the more tech heavy areas such as the NASDAQ, the S&P, um, and even emerging markets here. So let's move on from that one. URE. Interestingly enough, you know, real estate is a, one, of the, um, one of the areas that a lot of people have been worried about in the market simply for the fact with interest rates rising, Real estate, uh, you know, has been slowing down and less people have been wanting to go buy a home. Um, and you've started seeing, you know, mortgage industry starting to have layoffs or moving people around. So, you know, it's interesting to see that we're actually having a bullish divergence, even with a real estate ETF. So URE, as much as I would say, you know, as much as you're, uh, as, as much as we'd like to say, oh, maybe this isn't the greatest place to go look at, the charts say otherwise. And as we know, charts don't lie. Charts are not emotional. That's why we look at them so much. And, you know, a chart is like a big picture of a stock. And as the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So looking at URE, lower lows, lower highs currently. But over that same time frame, we have higher lows and higher highs with the MACD. Now the MACD is getting ready to break above that level of zero as of right now. So, or as of maybe the next couple of days. So this is definitely an interesting one to keep on our radar as well. Um, Rodney is saying the screen's a little fuzzy today. So Rodney, if you're seeing, if you're having a fuzzy screen, click on that little gear in the, right below me. Let me see, right right down there somewhere. Uh, click on that little gear and make sure your, uh, your resolution is set properly. Because I know uh, YouTube has been having some weird things going on um, with their resolutions recently and some buffering issues as well. Uh, what is the RT for DDM? Uh, Monica, one second, we can go take a look at that in just a moment. Let's finish getting through these. VIX, probably not gonna take a look at this for right now, staying away from that. S&P 500, so this is going to be a leverage ETF, uh, or leverage regular ETF on the S&P 500. And as we can see, the bullish divergence is still showing. Lower lows here, but not confirming that lower low because the MACD is hitting higher lows. 
So, you know, quickly running through, once you get familiar with what you're looking for for bullish divergences, you know to draw your trend line connecting these lower highs right here, here, here. You know, use your trend line, wait for that breakout there. This is how fast it can be. So, okay, this one, we have a bullish divergence on TNA, small caps. I like seeing that. URTY for the Russell. Once again, a smaller cap aspect here. Um, also has a bullish divergence. MACD is getting ready to cross above that neutral level of zero. FAS, financial bull, same situation. Lower lows with price. MACD steadily re re rising here. UCO, so this one not really due to the major indices, more of a commodity with oil. Right now, you know, we're seeing a sell off in oil after a really long bull run, about two and a half years almost at this point, or coming up on three years actually at this point. Um, so, therefore, you know, oil, while it is popping here today, I feel like, you know, with the, the big run that we've seen, we need to have a little bit more of a pullback before we find that true, um, you know, dip, if you will, the bottom of this dip. I'm still long term bullish on oil, but overall, uh, you know, I'd be a little cautious with this one. And right now, the charts still say it still has potential to the downside right now. T triple Q. So if you're really bullish on what you're seeing here, you really want to get some, um, you know, big profits added to your portfolio. You had the three times or three times regular ETF or leverage ETF with the NASDAQ. And once again, the same look as what we were seeing earlier. You have price steadily moving lower, but the MACD has been steadily rising here over the last month or two and actually just right below that level of zero, looking like it's getting ready to break out to a new long-term uptrend uh, very, very soon. Then we have some, or some such as gold. Gold really file, or follows a different aspect of what, you know, or uh, a different direction. It's not really tied to one direction or another in the market. So therefore gold, while we do possibly see a bullish divergence on this one, uh, if price still moves lower and we break down below that low that we had back here, then obviously that bullish divergence would be void and we'd move on from that and not consider that one. Uh, ERX, so an energy bull ETF. Not really seeing any divergences here, just seeing confirmation of that downward move here so far. FNGU, so looking at the FANG stocks, once again, more tech heavy, obviously. Similar situation. Price has been steadily moving lower. When we look at the MACD, it's been steadily rising. And now, once again, right below that level of zero, indicating a new possible long-term uptrend may be on the horizons here with this one. So really, if you're going through it, the main message that we're wanting to make sure everybody's aware of here is because, or uh, is that there is a lot of potential, especially in the most overbeaten areas of the market, for um, for a new long-term uptrend to start forming. Now, everybody's, you know, the old saying goes, "When there's fear on the street, that's or when there's blood on the streets, that's when everybody should be buying." Well, what do we have currently? Everybody's been fearful of a recession what's going on over in Europe. There's been a lot of fear left, right, and center all over the market. And the charts are starting to show that, hey, now may be better time than ever to start you know, getting your toes wet, uh, looking for a new potential opportunity to jump on board. Now, whether it be a short-term bull or bear market rally, or if it's a new start of, a, of the end of the, or new run in the bull market, that's still yet to be decided. But at the same time, our job here is to make sure our subscribers and our users are as informed as possible to help them make money in the market. So rather be early and have it prepared, give you guys some time to prepare with these, rather than be late and have you guys jumping on board at the end of runs and missing out on some good or uh, missing out on, on the opportunity and then end up taking a loss there as well. Um, later we show us how to set up your favorite chart indicators like MACD. Um, yeah, Robert. So one thing I will say with that, uh, you can only add one, um, one indicator at the bottom of the chart. So you can have your MACD or you can have your moving averages, but then the MACD earnings per share, those types of things, um, those you'll have to rotate on the bottom graph. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So Actually, well, this isn't going to have earnings per share, but we go to the graph settings at the bottom. 
And then the lower graph where you have the indicator, you can tap on that. And this is where you can choose between volume, RT, earnings per share, MACD, RSI, DPO. If you wanna customize any of those technical indicators, just simply click on settings to the right. And that's where you can customize the periods you're using for that indicator. I'm not gonna get in too much into the calculations of MACD here today. If you wanna know more about the math behind it, go check out invest or investopedia.com. They do a great, uh, great example of breaking down the, uh, the math for that. So, um, you know, that's all you have to do. If you want to go from one, let's say MACD to RSI, tap on RSI, go back. Now you have your RSI at the graph or at the bottom. Obviously, same thing would be for um, for earnings per share as well. All right. So now that we've gone through that. Hopefully, you guys are seeing a reoccurring theme of some good potential bottom fishing opportunities without having to deal with individual stocks. So you could deal with overall broader moves with ETFs rather than having to try to find those best performers or those uh, best candidates out of each of those different industries or areas. Um, now, Monica was asking what the RT was. The RT is at 0.87. And as we talked about at the very beginning, a lot of these are going to have a low RT the majority of the list has a sell rating. So therefore this is once again, more of a bottom fishing style of an, or a uh, bottom fishing approach to uh, taking advantage of broader moves in the market here. So hopefully, hopefully you guys now um, have an idea on what you should be looking at, what types of indicators uh, or what types of uh, ETFs are really, you know, looking good for you. Also, how to spot bullish divergence is a little bit easier because right now we're seeing a massive amount of uh, divergences occurring here um, from the technical perspective with a lot of these ETFs. Um, can you see the DEW on the app? Uh, Jonathan, you, can, you can't see the little arrows like you can with the desktop, but you can create the DEW timing system inside the mobile. Uh, we did a video about it a few weeks ago. I highly recommend to go check that out. And that'll uh, walk you through. You can pause it, take notes, whatever you want to do. Uh, but that should definitely help you out there as well. All right. So with that, uh, hopefully you guys have some new candidates on your radar to help you guys make even more money in the market. And if you guys have questions about it, once again, as always, never hesitate to ask. I'd be glad to answer those questions for you. So from now, let's go ahead and start uh, transitioning into the fan favorite here of analyzing any stock that you guys want to take a look at in less than 10 seconds. So Victor, Victor's been patient. He did want to see Baba. We can take a look at that, starting off with that. And if you guys have other stocks you want to see, go ahead and start putting them in the chat. And also, if you haven't already hit that like button, smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's session. If you've learned something new or found a new candidate to add to your radar, smash that like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps uh, you know, continue to support our channel and helps with the YouTube algorithms there. All right, so Baba, B-A-B-A. -A. Looking at Baba, Baba has poor long-term potential. It has a lot of risk associated with it. However, you are in a really strong short-term uptrend. So this stock is definitely a speculative play. I think really anything, I think we can all agree that anything out of China is definitely going to be considered speculative. Um, overall though, the stock is favorable. It has enough momentum on a short-term basis to offset the amount of risk. So if you're a momentum trader or day trader, uh, you know, somebody who's scalping, this could definitely be of interest. Um, but looking at it here, well, actually, let's go ahead and change that graph setting at the bottom to back to MACD. And I see uh, Jonathan's asking, do you prefer the MACD to the RSI? Um, they show two different things. They can easily work in one, one setup there. Uh, MACD is more of a trend indicator, whereas RSI is an overbought, oversold indicator. So they could definitely work in tandem. Um, it's hard to say one over the other because they show they look at two different aspects. Uh, you know, you can use them together to get a better picture of, you know, are you seeing that momentum sh or momentum changing? And is the stock at oversold territories where you would expect to see that momentum shift? 
Um, and that could help you get an early sign on when that stock may be turning around. Um, so yeah, can't say one's better than the other because they're looking, they're two really different indicators there. Um, so now that we've got the MACD, MACD steadily moving higher it is on a longer term uptrend. You can see since it is above that level of zero. Uh, with it though, you know, you are seeing a level of resistance right around 120. I'd wait to see if we can, you know, really get follow through from, it's trying to break out of that resistance at 120, but um, I'd wait to see if you can get follow through from that if you're looking at it from the upside. From the downside, if it falls below that level of 120 and starts to pull away from that resistance level, uh, then yeah, that would be the interesting aspect or that would be the uh, look we're looking for to short it. Um, really, price targets, maybe 100. You have some capitulation around 100. Uh, but I mean, you had... A triple bottom right here around 80. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it there. Yeah, you had a triple bottom right around 80. I'd be careful trying to short it at this stage unless we break down below that level of 120. Um, wanted to ask you, how should I set up the personal portfolio for the best long and short situation as I do not have the derby and I'm looking to get the best picks? through this method. Um, Victor, I mean, testing out an idea. If you have an idea of what you're looking for, um, if you're trying to find the best strategy or the best uh, best performer at you know any specific time, it's going to take a lot of a lot of manual work without the derby. Um, the derby is you know that time saver. That's what it provides for you is it saves you hours upon hours of time um, finding that quickly rather than having to go through you know, 200 plus searches that have been created over the 30 plus years we've been around um, to try to find which one's performing the best over certain times. So um, unfortunately, I'm not on the desktop right now, so I couldn't even go through that aspect of it because you need to do quick testing. But if you give our support a call, ask them about quick testing, ask them how you can find the performance of certain or different searches, uh, that would be your best bet right there. All right, so Baba though, from a short perspective, you need to see it back below 120. With what we're seeing though, from a lot of the tech stocks, a lot of the uh, reversal signs, I'd be extremely cautious trying to short uh, something that's tied to a lot of tech. So that's that's a long story short on that one. All right, GME, sure. New earnings announcement, uh, or not earnings announcement, excuse me. Uh, stock split announcement as of yesterday. We finally got confirmation of that. A four for one split, which will definitely be a nice boost to the portfolio. If the shorts, um, you know, if the short theory out there has any sort of credence, this kind of play will definitely uh, bring that to light and could make it, could give it another run like we saw with Tesla back in uh, 2020. So gonna be interesting, but this one right now, has poor long-term potential. It does have a lot of, uh, or it does have more risk associated with it. However, you are in a short-term uptrend. Not enough though to offset the speculation currently. Uh, from a fundamental standpoint, they haven't really made that full transformation yet. So of course the fundamentals are gonna be poor at this point. Uh, but with that news, maybe a little bit more good news coming up in the near future, we could see a nice run here coming in with GME. So I like what we're seeing with that one. However, stock is not favorable based on the vector best analysis currently. All right, um, GTX. GTX, good long-term potential, but it does have more risk than the average stock out there. It is in a slight uptrend or steady uptrend currently. So overall, stock is favorable. Uh, PSNY, let's go ahead and take a look. PSNY, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline, so overall the stock is not favorable. Uh, yeah, Maria, um, they announced it, I believe it was March or April that they were considering doing a split. Um, and then they announced after hours yesterday, after the market closed, that they're doing a four for one uh, stock dividend. So it's not technically a split, it's a stock dividend. Um, so therefore it, it creates the same aspect where it's basically a split, but you get a little bit different tax benefits by calling it a dividend. Um, 
and instead of you know just taking the share and dividing it you're doing it allocated to people who own the shares so um yeah it's a stock split dividend is what what they announced yesterday after hours which is why we're seeing it uh running a little bit here today all right so ps and y poor long-term potential though a lot of risk and a steady decline therefore the stock is not favorable here um gpk um gpk good long-term potential less risk associated with it you're in a slight uptrend so overall the stock is definitely favorable i like what we're seeing with that one um also for just a little bit more insight on the split though you know because it's not a cash dividend it's going to be a uh, stock dividend um you do get the tax breaks as long you know it's based off of you don't have to pay tax on that dividend up front um it's not taxable until you sell those shares so you know that is the other aspect if you're going to plan on holding them for a while um you know that depends on that will uh d or decide how much tax you pay on on the dividend there all right um a p p s a p p s good long-term potential but a lot of risk associated with it it's basically in a steady free fall stocks about average it has a sell rating probably still would stay away from this one for the time being um amn amn good long-term potential less risk associated with it you're in a nice steady uptrend so overall stock is favorable um google g-o-o-g-l google good long-term potential less risk associated with it you're basically moving flat on a short-term basis need to see that rt preferably be at 1.1 or greater at 1.04 you're basically treading water at this stage so keep an eye on RT, but overall stock is favorable here. Um, SKY. SKY, good long-term potential. You have less risk associated with it. You're now starting to get in a short-term uptrend. So overall stock is favorable here. Uh, ASRT. ASRT, good long-term potential, but do you do have some risk with that long-term potential. However, you are in a really strong short-term uptrend, so overall stock is favorable here. Um, let's see, Meta, M-E-T-A. So Meta, good long-term potential, less risk associated with it. However, we need to see that short-term trend start to turn back up. Right now, it is still moving lower, so therefore, now is not the time to be long in it. It is a good stock, but we need to see that short-term uptrend start to pick up. Um, or we need to see that short-term trend start to pick up. Um, let's see, NVAX. NVAX has good long-term potential, but does have more risk associated with it. You are in a short-term uptrend. Overall, stock is favorable. Uh, Amazon, AMZN. AMZN, poor long-term potential, but you do have less risk associated with it. So more of a conservative stock. Company makes money hand over fist, no surprise there. However, even with that stock split that it had just a few weeks ago, it hasn't really had that split effect quite yet. And the stock is still moving lower overall. But since it is more, or it's considered more of that tech heavy type of play, um, you know, as we've seen with a lot of the ETFs we looked at earlier, we could be seeing a reversal coming in in the very near future on this one. So keep an eye on this, keep an eye on it, or add it to your uh, your watch list, add it to your shopping list, and wait for those reversal signs or confirmation of a breakout to start occurring before jumping on board. <clears throat> um, AAPL, taking a look at Apple. Apple has great long-term potential, has less risk associated with it. You're in a slight short-term uptrend. Overall, the stock is favorable. I'd keep an eye on that RT though. I want to see that RT a little bit higher than where it is right now. Um, SNOW. SNOW, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable here. All right, and let's see. Did I get them all today? Taking a look, making sure. I think I did. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead, jump back into the homepage here real fast and start to wind things down a little bit. So looking at it, 
The Dow is still up seven tenths of a percent. NASDAQ's pulling back a little bit, now up one and a half percent. S&P 500's up, still staying right about 1%. Vectorvest Composite up about 1.4%. So Vectorvest Composite improving, NASDAQ pulling back a little bit. S&P looks to be improving a little bit and Dow um, improving just slightly here. Still though, one tick into the green, therefore we still advocate caution when buying stocks at this time. Meaning, don't go bet the farm on the upside still. You know, if you wanna add a long position or two to your portfolio, great. But don't go betting the farm. Don't go, you know, loading up, take all that cash you have sitting on the sidelines and going and buying every single tech stock you can find right now. Right now, we're still advocating caution. So therefore, be careful. Um, looking at it here, nothing's really changed so far with the color guard. Uh, RT and buy to sell ratio still staying about flat from where we looked at yesterday uh, or where we looked at them just at the beginning of the session. Looking at the advance of declines, advances sitting at about 73% of stocks still moving higher and about 16% of stocks moving lower. So we are seeing those decliners starting to pick up a little bit. Advances staying about flat though. Um, Mark saying, even with Jerry hosting the Jack Club yesterday, you're still in my top five. <laughs> Appreciate that, Mark. Thank you. I'm glad I could be in the top five. Top five out of the top four. So <laughs> glad to see it. All right. So that's going to do it for me today. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's stream, don't forget smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. If you um, like today's content, we also have a 2 p.m. Trending Thursday coming up with Glenn Tompkins where he talks about what headlines are making the news that are impacting the market. So if you want to see what's hot, what's really driving these markets right now, Tune back in at 2 o'clock and hang out with Glenn. And if you ask him nicely, he may even sing for you. Occasionally he does, but you got to be really good for that one. All right, so thank you all for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. And make sure to be back here next, or next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern as we kick off our next coaching stream. So until then, take care. Adios and toodles.